Hello, shed update. Let's head into the shed for an update. This is my 614 watt hour battery. It's uh, 8S and it's four cells high, so it's 4P. It has a balancer perched on the top there. Um, it has a balancer, uh, a BMS, I mean, this is a Dali or daily BMS uh, there. And it has a fuse. This is charged from a solar panel which comes in there, it goes through this light bulb current limiter just to take the uh, top edge off the maximum current and goes straight into the battery. There is no charge controller. Here's the uh, watt meter, volt meter, ammeter. Uh, solar is coming in on blue and black there, coming out on blue and black there, and then it comes down to here. So that's the solar entry point that charges this battery. Um, and it's this solar panel. It's the left hand one of these two, which is an all black 325 watt with a maximum current of about, well, oh, pushing 10 amps, I think. The one on the right, 240 watt is not currently in use. So given that this has no charge controller, what stops this battery overcharging when it's a nice sunny day like it is today and the battery becomes full? Well, in this setup, this does. This relay uh, waits until the battery gets to 28 volts. It then switches on and connects up this buck converter, which takes the 28 volts <laughs> that it is at that time, down to nominal voltage on this pack is 25.6 volts uh, down to 12 volts and puts it into this thing which uh, to all intents and purposes is a big heater but it's an ant miner l3 so while it's shoveling out lots of heat it's also generating microscopic amounts of cryptocurrency and this thing pulls about 20 amps at 12 volts which translates to about 10 or 12 amps at uh, this 25 volts so that overwhelms the solar panel to ensure that when these batteries get up to 28 volts they're never going to go any higher unless of course the ant miner can't connect to the internet and then it won't fire up its hashing boards and then there could be an issue and the bms would come into play then and cut off charging to these cells so that they can't be overcharged so that's the 614 amp hour battery. That number comes from eight by four because that's the array size, by 3.2, that's the cell voltage, by six, which is the amp hours uh, capacity of each cell. I think that's 614, let me check. Yes, that's correct, 614.4 amp hours. Now feeding this is a solar panel and I'm going to be using the 240 watt, so 240 watt uh, solar panel to feed this. Um, the bigger panel is going to go on a bigger battery. The bigger battery is partly here. Um, there are eight of the 40 cells that it's going to include in its finished form. It's going to be uh, eight cells wide by five cells high. Uh, there are another oh, 6 by 2 12 cells here on this uh, battery, but these are all going to be combined into one battery. So that means that we can have another battery here, which is 7, 6, 8 uh, watt hours, and that will be fed with my 325 watt solar panel. So we'll have that system in addition to the slightly smaller system. And then there's going to be another battery, which is going to be a 2268 watt hours uh, lithium ion phosphate. It's the same sort of thing. It's eight cells, but only one in parallel. I'm not paralleling these up. And they won't be charged, uh, well, this pack won't be charged from a solar panel. It'll actually be charged from these two batteries when they get up to a certain voltage. 
So in here you've got the relay switch SW SW so you've got those switches that's this thing here the voltage controlled relay so when it gets to a certain voltage it switches on and thus discharges the battery into whatever is down the line and so what I'm going to do then is have another switch on each of these SW SW and they're going to go to uh, buck boost converters to charge this larger battery so it's going to look like this you've got a second switch it might be at a different voltage set point this might be say 27 volts and at that voltage the buck boost comes in charges the larger battery but probably at a lower current than the solar panel is charging this battery so uh, there will come a point where the uh, voltage rises a bit higher and then the uh, switch at say 28 volts will turn on the miner the miner is the sort of ultimate protector of this battery from it being overcharged but um, when these batteries are at a slightly lower voltage then these buck boosts will charge this larger 2268 watt battery this is going to use the prismatic cells that i bought a couple of years ago but then what happens when this battery gets full well again another sw and another miner and as you can see i've got lots of miners here there are four there uh, there's a couple down there the one at the bottom will never work but that's uh, not important so this diagram is getting quite complicated but there is a further complication I now have these three 12 volt lithium ion phosphate batteries I've done reviews on each of these I think I can show them in the same uh, shot now my contractual obligations are complete so these three 12 volt lithium ion phosphate batteries so what will I do with these so here they are, three 12 volt lithium ion phosphate batteries, and I'm going to put these into zones. So I might, for example, have a lighting zone for one of them. Now, currently my lighting system is up here. Well, that's the switches and the watt meter, and they're fed from these lead acid batteries, which are fed from other lead acid batteries further down the garden. Um, specifically these three lead acid trojan batteries these big batteries and they're fed from these three small solar panels 80 watts that are mounted on the fence and then there's a wire running up here past the solar panels up to this <laughs> terminal block which was only ever meant to be temporary and into the lead acid batteries in the shed so I'm going to phase out the lead acid because it's a bit long in the tooth now. Um, but the lighting battery is only used occasionally. Um, you can see the lights I've got there, these uh, LED strip lights. A couple there, another one, another two down there. And those lights are only on, as I say, for part of the time. So what I might do on the lighting battery is also incorporate this, which is my Wi-Fi access point. It's an Edimax unit. And it has um, a five port uh, switch in it, which is mostly used for the ant miners. So the ant miners have wired ethernet so that they can communicate with the mining pool so that I get my monetary rewards. Now another 12 volt battery uh, might do the security camera. So up here, there's a Blue Rams uh, security camera that is wi-fi but it's got this uh, cable which at the moment yeah goes into one of these usbs so it's actually powered by mains and i've got a feeling it's got quite a high current pull so whether that will effectively run on a battery i don't really know and then down here i've got a dehumidifier it's this one um it's a peltier dehumidifier and they don't really work when it's cold because the way they work is that they just create a cold surface and blow air over it. Well, if every surface in the entire shed is cold, then it's not going to prioritise this thing, and it's not going to do a lot of dehumidification. But let's call the third 12 volt battery the dehumidification zone. It might do other things as well. 
uh, it might run some things that require 12 volts. What else requires 12 volts? Oh, well, there's this, um, it's a little Zigbee hub, which is connected to Ethernet and then does Zigbee for all the Toya Smart Life or little home uh, devices. Now these are going to work slightly differently. Up here you've got these batteries which when they get nearly full they just push uh, power through these buck boosts into another battery which then has the miner as its ultimate load. These ones because they don't have the ability uh, when they're being charged to offset that by discharging because they don't have a miner on them are going to have another switch which is in a charge controller mode so this will be something I'm calling give and take so here we are give and take and the and is in capitals because it's a logical and so if this battery thinks it's got enough um, energy to give a bit of it um, to one of the 12 volt batteries there'll be a switch that will run down here and there'll be a buck which will be there and then that will go into another switch and it will only transfer energy if this switch goes on so that the giver says okay I'm I'm okay to give some energy but also the taker says well I require some energy because I'm a bit low so you've got this and situation if both switches are on then the buck will transfer energy into the 12 volt battery and then I'll have a give and take arrangement for the 768 which will go into another switch there'll be another buck converter and then I'll have yet a third one for the big 2268 <laughs> if I get around to doing all this it's a lot of stuff um, which will have a give and take arrangement with the third 12 volt battery so that's the grand plan there are six batteries in all three uh, 25 volt batteries and three 12 or 12.8 they are really these are 25.6 um, lots and lots of these little uh, relay switch units which is over here this one I have bought a couple more uh, and they can be used in discharge controller or charge controller this one is discharge controller so when it gets up to 28 volts it switches on and will discharge into the load this battery uh, thus preventing the solar panel from overcharging it so this is going to require uh, quite a lot more space for these batteries to go up on shelves. Um, I have started working on a shelf in module 5, if I come around here, because uh, you can't get through here because it's barricaded off. If you come round, uh, I've started working on this shelf, but I don't like the fact that I attached the shelves to the outer panelling. So I'm trying to come up with a new way, in fact you might be able to see it here of attaching the shelves to the main posts so that they're independent of the outer panels but yeah a lot of this is just being used for storage at the moment of just old tut old projects and that sort of thing uh, more stuff here in module 4 including the led matrix from 1992 that was uh, more storage boxes and over here in module ooh, what's this three i think uh, that was the vocoder power supply. Might um, come back to this because this uses a uh, boost converter to raise to a very high voltage, like 100 volts. And then basically um, AC power supplies because they can also take DC to bring that down, but also get you that galvanic isolation. Uh, what was that? That was the supercapacitor Bluetooth speaker. That's right. Charged with an LTC 3780 module. So that was an update from the shed, including the grand uh, energy storage and distribution idea that is currently in my head. Now, can I step out of the shed backwards without falling over, possibly? Um, that's it for this video. So let's get the whole thing in. Cheerio.